Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Greetings of peace uh, to you all, my brothers, sisters, uh, and all humankind in earth. Well, I would like to start uh, by saying Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, uh, which is uh, I start in the name of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, the Most Merciful, the Most Gracious. I want to briefly touch on uh, the FIFA World Cup. I suppose uh, you know whenever I check out Instagram or social media uh, globally. there is uh, there seems to be a very positive uh, even youtube you know there are a lot of videos about how uh, qatar has actually uh, changed the game how uh, they've used uh, the fifa world cup as a platform to inform and educate people about islam and the qatari or the middle eastern or the arab culture which is uh, subhanallah amazing which is wonderful and i think i think the influence is quite positive but ah uh, uh, that always that but uh, but my my concern and uh, what i'm trying to say here <laughs> is uh, it's not a negative thing it's it's really about uh, the fact that if we are trying to show the world that islam is indeed the solution and that islam is not what uh, the islamophobic uh, western campaign shows it to be i think the best way for us to do that is at an individual level we tend to or we should reflect on ourselves uh, because of course you know we can post pictures about the world cup we can post pictures about morocco uh, i know that there are a lot of people who are just learning about morocco you know that uh, there are there were many in the world who didn't even know that a country like that existed and uh, i myself uh, i even though i knew i didn't really know uh, about its uh, arab uh, association you know how islam was and the history i'm just reading up on it and there's a wonderful and remarkable history Uh, of how islam and how muslims uh, brought peace and prosperity uh, to andalusia right before the portuguese uh, and the dutch uh, invaded uh, and uh, and the french especially well um so in such a situation what i'm trying to say is yes we all can be very happy and we should always say alhamdulillah for everything for all the blessing all the blessings that all the baraka that uh, allah subhanahu wa taala is sharing with us but uh, we should be very careful you know i i'm always very cautious when good things are happening because uh, see it's it's uh, you see the the example of shaitan right what did shaitan do uh, when adam alayhi salam adam and eve when they were in the garden the first man and uh, woman that were created they were given the garden you know they were given everything they had everything so that's a really good thing so what happens is shaitan comes and mixes a little bit of deceit into it and uh, takes it away right shaitan came uh, and said uh, you know you uh, eat from that fruit it's the fruit of uh, eternity if you eat from it uh, you'll have eternal life you'll be like uh, jibril or you'll be like uh, gabriel uh, jibril alayhi salam uh, the angels you'll be eternal uh, and uh, you know we fall for it so whenever good things are happening i think as uh, muslims it's very important that we keep a check on ourselves and uh, that's the that's the toughness that's the that's the question right do we really check ourselves do we really go back to our roots do we really keep our hearts pure how much effort do we put in that because it's very easy to get entangled in all the fitna all the you know all the evil uh, even though it is uh, seemingly painted as something beautiful from the outside uh, the evil is great and you know how things like the mobile phone the television uh, these things these kind of tools right even automobiles uh, a lot of this technology you know artificial intelligence machine intelligence uh, if you take mobile applications uh, soft social media uh, all these kinds of things you know they came into the world and we adopted it because we liked it 
they were so beautiful they are well designed and they look good but uh, when we start engaging with them slowly uh, we tend to deviate and we tend to get further and further away from our religion so i th- i don't think that even in the case of the fifa world cup if it is actually a platform and if it is actually supposed to change the world if it is uh, supposed to carry a positive message about islam then as muslims i think uh, we should really be very cautious we should really check ourselves our relationship with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask ourselves uh, are we really doing our best right are we really doing our best because um if if it comes down to effort when you compare with what went on during the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam's time and the companions the sahaba and their efforts we are nothing right we we don't know what sacrifice means we don't know uh what it feels uh to to be prosecuted uh for faith we don't know it uh, yazir and sumayya the the first martyrs of islam they they gave their life why just because they believed in allah and just because of that the quraish were you know they were they were doing inhuman things they were drawing blood they were looking to kill and maim the muslims so we don't live in such a day and age so in such a situation i think it's really important that we always go back to our roots and the root being our heart individually you and me we keep a check on ourselves as to how our relationship is with allah are we deviating are we going further are we missing prayers you know do we i mean how bad it's it's really let's say for example you do miss a prayer uh, one of the you know farl prayers you know what if you miss uh, fajr how bad do you feel right what if you miss uh, ashr how bad do you feel how how much repentance uh, does it take do you cry do you do you feel incruciating or excruciating pain inside your heart that you missed one of those things that were made obligatory upon you by allah subhanahu wa taala you know i i recently read that prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, during the battle of the confederates or uh, the battle of the trench right this was the the last battle uh, before muslims actually took started to take the offensive against the the quraish now in that battle they were so busy that uh, prophet and some of the companions even umar rali allah anha uh, they missed the ashar prayer they they missed the evening prayer and the prophet was so angry about it he was so angry that he he made a supplication uh, cursing the quraish for making them so busy that they had to miss the prayer it was that serious what do we do if we miss a prayer now we just let it go and we move on to the next prayer so there's a lot i mean there's a lot we are we are nothing we are not doing good enough we are we are not good enough we cannot even come close there's a lot we need to do we need to try harder we need to work harder we need to get closer and closer to allah subhanahu wa taala we need to go to him we need to go to him with all of our problems we need to go to him he's the only one who can solve so i wish i truly wish that whenever these kind of good things that are happening uh seemingly good things then to reap the good of it we need to cultivate our relationship with allah if not uh, satan who is waiting at the edge of the straight path of sirat al mustaqim uh, he promised you know he promised that he will wait at the straight path and he will call muslims followers of allah subhanahu wa taala to deviate from the path so if we don't really check ourselves and if we don't correct ourselves and if we don't take care of our deen um we are obviously going to deviate and we are obviously going to fail uh in being the best possible muslim we can be i ask allah subhanahu wa taala to help us all uh and to give us the baraka and the blessings of uh, all the good things that are happening to the muslims around the world rabbi aghfirli wa liwalidayya wa lil mu'minina yawma yaqumul hisab
Subhanallahi walhamdulillahi wa la ilaha illallah wa allahu akbar wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahil aliyyul azim Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh